So there's a hundred cars in the GTA Online Sports class, and for the hundredth random all episode, let's race all of them. This video is brought to you by my second channel, Bruffy's Random Bits. Subscribe to it via the link in the description for random clips that don't make it to the main channel, as well as full blown let's plays, with my current project being to play through all the GTA games before GTA 6. And of course, for the harmonic start in the hundredth random more, I am of course at the back, it spawned me in stone dead last position. With a harmonic start, we're right at the back. Uh, so there is one notable exception to the 100 cars thing and that's our first car. This is the Shiava which is a, a Project Homecoming specific, yeah, well you know, it's a mod car. Um, because the S95 doesn't exist on PC. Because expanded and enhanced, <laughs> it's only PS5 and Series X. So we don't have any S95, so that's why we're doing the Shiava in its place, because it's somewhat similar. Um, and that's why we're doing it first as well for the first lap, just to, to get it out of the way. And then the rest of the 99 laps will be all the other 99 sports cars in the vanilla GTA Online sports cars class. Around the testing track, well the race version, the updated racing version of the testing track. It'll all come together by the end in a big way for this one, because we've got big pace differences in the sports class, as you all know. But with 100 laps, it's going to get quite spread out before it comes back closer together again. I can't believe there's 100 cars, honestly. Alright, Fusillade, one of the slowest ones first. It's weird because I will have driven all of these cars around this track before. <laughs> Also, we got to keep in mind that the performances might not be the vanilla GTA Online performances. It might be, uh, you know, Project Homecoming specific where the cars are a little bit quicker than normal or something like that. This fuselage might not be as slow as the fuselage normally is. But yeah, it is a random more, which means uh, it's it's not a random all. It's, it's a different kind of random race, and this one in particular, it's a class, a custom class race. So a class has been made, thanks to Dinmite for, for making that class. I've got nowhere to go. Uh, yeah, Dinmite has made a class with all 100 vanilla GTA sports cars in it. We've got 100 laps. We will race all of the sports cars, again, apart from the S95. All right, Karuma. So, not starting with any of the super quick ones just yet. We've also got the setting which Insomniac has put in for this, uh, for, from this point on that we can use if we want to uh, for random races where everyone will get to do all of their laps. So when the leader crosses the line, only the leader's race finishes. So we will get all 100 laps, we will see all 100 sports cars, even if I'm a lap or two down or something. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get all of them regardless. Everybody's gonna get all of them. We hope, he puts in the chat. Well, yeah, we can hope that it'll work, I suppose. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, get out the popcorn just in case. And it is worth, you know, trying to defend your position a little bit again with uh, these kind of races, because there is an element, you know, it's not just it's not just randomness and it's up to the look of what cars you get. It is up to your own performance and the people who do better in the cars are going to win the race and whatnot. But with me starting in 32nd place, I don't have an awful lot of hope, no matter how experienced I am. God, especially with the amount of time I'm losing to all this traffic. Um, yeah, this is there's a lot of time loss. I'm certainly not winning the race. I don't know what I can get out of it, but hey, I'm coming from 32nd on the starting grid, so <laughs> Ooh.
yeah theoretically you could say I've probably done more laps of this track than anybody else so I should just beat everybody but that's not really how it works <laughs> Straight through, there's the Penumbra FF. We've got the Rockstar created faster Penumbra, rather than the Project Homecoming faster Penumbra, which we will see at some point. Is the Project Homecoming Penumbra, the regular Penumbra, faster than the FF on Project Homecoming? If anybody knows in the chat, it would be interesting to know. We got the Ron livery. I think there'll be a few Ron liveries actually. FF is faster. Okay, so even the buffed Project Homecoming regular Penumbra isn't quite as fast as the FF. One class above the normal Penumbra. Okay, so they're not too dissimilar actually in pace then if it's only one class, one pace class difference. the alpha. Uh, the first DLC sports car, the alpha, right? Alongside the Massacro. The alpha and the Massacro came at the same time with the Turismo R, I think. I did do a video talking about the fact that we now have a hundred cars in the GTA Online sports class. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it in the description and whatnot if you want to check it out. Um, it is it is ridiculous. I, I do also put some stats in that video and showcase all the cars in the order that they were released and whatnot. But bloody hell, demon drags for days. See, that's why when you start at the back, even if you drive drive a perfect race yourself, you're never gonna win because the amount of time you've lost at that point already. <laughs> Um, just from other people, you know, getting involved in crashes and whatnot, you know, that's just time gone. <laughs> the leaders are half a lap ahead already. Nothing you can really do about it. But, as always with these class, you know, these random class races where everyone gets the same cars by the end, there will be an element of the faster car, the, the cars in the, you know, uh, Towards the end of the race, the cars at the front will be the ones who haven't had the slow cars. The cars at the back will be more likely to be the ones that haven't had uh, the quick cars. And, you know, the people who got unlucky at the start will get the fast cars by the end and it will all come together towards the end. Because that's how it's designed to be. Yeah, 100 cars in the sports class. Never thought I'd see the day. I'm almost in the top half. I haven't had any of the top tier sports cars yet, of which there are quite a few now. To be fair, the top of the sports class has never looked as healthy. Now that's just a natural consequence of having 100 cars in the class. You're gonna have a lot of cars on the same pace. That's why we got a lot of tiers as well. I mean, sports is obviously by far the biggest. Um, the biggest of the classes in GTA. But the top of the class is actually fairly decent at the minute. There's seven cars that can be used in the top tier. Um, one of them is technically a sports classic with the Sterling GT, but the other six are all fully fledged sports cars. Although, that is that doesn't apply to PC, because half of them, three of the car, cars in the top tier are HSW cars, so in this race there's only going to be three S tier sports cars that we experience during the 100. Well, top half, there it is. Alright, comment SR, this is tier A, this is up there. This 
I would have thought this should be my best lap so far. Barring any problems with... Yeah. Crashes and whatnot. Summer can't handle the noises outside. I have got the window open for, for temperature reasons, but... So if, you, if you hear any outside noises or summer noises because of the outside noises, it's just what I have to do. <laughs> I haven't been able to get past this common S2. Disappointing. I haven't been utilising the pace of the SR as I should. Summer's annoyed with me probably for not driving well enough. Alright, the Rustin, nice and slow. Unless it's quicker on Project Homecoming, maybe. I don't know. It's one of the slowest in the vanilla sports class. Yeah, it's definitely quicker on Project Homecoming. <laughs> I don't remember going quicker than quicker than a Sprunk Buffalo in sports car testing. <laughs> the quicker Rustin. We haven't had the quicker Penumbra yet, but we've had the quicker Rustin. There's the SM722 up ahead. That was such a forgettable car for me. I sold it immediately. I really did not like that car. I didn't like the way that it handled. I didn't like the way that it looks. Oh yeah, we do have the carts as well, of course, the Vito carts. We, you know, you, you're gonna see the full gamut of crazy, stupid uh, car selections and car uh, alloc class allocations for cars in the sports class in this race. The sports class kicked it all off with the blister compact being in sports, and to be fair, even you know, I made the point about that in that video about the 100 sports cars, but yeah, to be fair, there, there was really bad class misallocations for the sports class on release. When you look at like the Fusillade and stuff like that, they could have gone in uh, coup yeah, Coupes, the Penumbra could have gone in Compacts, Futo could have gone in Compacts. So the sports class has always just been stick everything in it and hope for the best. But it got significantly worse after the Blister Compact and then subsequently the the Raptor, the Carts, the Strite is one of the worst ones. Revolta. There's a there's a collection of vehicles in the sports class. Oh, no. Oh. I'm having to wait for many things there. That was just a total mess, all caused by what was going on up front. Okay, now I can go. Uh, but yeah, there's a big collection of sports cars in like the mid pack that set like one minute four, one minute three lap times. That all would have been amazing in sedans. Revolt is one of them. Stuff like the Komoda, the VSTR. There's, there's so many, and they would have been perfectly on pace with things like the Shafter V12 and all this kind of stuff at the top of sedans. Um, yeah. Well, this is slow, isn't it? <laughs> what a shame that the Omnis name has been sullied by this car. <laughs> and the acceleration to get back up the inside, though. this blister compact before we get to the hairpin. 
It's acceleration sort of comes in the second phase, which is kind of weird. The Omnus EGT. It's certainly a lot more weird like than regular electric cars that kind of get the, that instant acceleration. This doesn't really have the instant acceleration. It gets it in the second phase and then has no top end, so loses it immediately. Hey, top 10! We've come from 32nd to 10th. Our forgettable tuner. I think I might just stay off the racing line when I get the carts. It's so difficult for other people to judge the pace difference and, and where you are because they're so small. Might be safer to just stay off the racing line and let people pass. terms of a total race time kind of thing. A, fa a faster tuner coming past me, the Jester RR. <laughs> Cut back. Hey, the Masakro race car, we've had the two early race cars. We are going to settle in for a long race, by the way, if it wasn't obvious. A hundred laps of this track, we're looking at well over a hundred minutes. So, it's going to be a long one, but it is the hundredth episode of the Random More series, which encapsulates all random races that aren't random alls. And with us having a hundred sports cars now, it felt like the perfect combination. Even if it is going to be a little bit long. A sideways alpha. There's ninth. Again, you never know how these races are going to go. I could only be in ninth because 20 people behind me have had all the slow cars first and someone's going to fly up towards the end of the race, but we'll see as it all closes in towards the end in like an hour and a bit's time. <laughs> Energy Retro Custom. in the middle of the road. I remember when the LG Retro Custom came out and you had to turn the LG RH8 into it but it made it into a slower vehicle because the LG Retro Custom isn't as quick as the original LG and there was widespread discontent with the general GTA population when they found that out. <laughs> I think it's even slower in a straight line, right? Like the LG RH8's biggest weakness was its straight line speed, and then the Retro Custom went even slower, and the hand had less grip. I mean, it makes sense that it would be slower, because it's an older car, but people were still not happy. I didn't really care. Those were the days when the LG RH8 was still the king of the sports class. They had to engineer a completely overpowered car with the pariah to de dethrone it. Oh yeah, the one the thing that didn't make sense with the LG was converting the new car at Benny's into the older car. That's the yeah, that's the big thing. That, there was no real need to have the LG Retro Custom be a Benny's vehicle. I mean, I think that's the same is true for a few of the Benny's cars. Because we don't have an LG Retro. We've got an LG Retro Custom, but there isn't a standard LG Retro. <laughs> there probably should have been. Same thing with the Comet here. Oh, 770. I really like the 770. I have been, um, 
have been doing some small amounts of retesting. Oh, that was good respawning. Uh, for expanded and enhanced new gen. Don't expect to see it anytime soon, but for the new series of testing videos, I do want to make sure I've got the most accurate and up-to-date lap times. And I've started with the sports cars, actually. And I set a really lovely lap in the 770. It was one of those that stood out to me as just a really peachy lap. Just hit all the apexes nicely, and it was just a joy to drive. Best lap for the leader, mild at the minute, is a one minute. Must have had one of the quicker cars early. I still haven't had a top tier car yet. Issy Sport is not quite top, top tier, but it's up there. It's got some good, uh, good grip. Having tyres can clip and be so smooth over the bumps always helps as well. Should put some off-road wheels on this one, really. Alright, we're on the verges of a top seven. Thing is, I haven't had any of the carts. I haven't had any of the bli there's two blister compacts technically, so I haven't had those yet. I might not have had the very best cars, but I also haven't had the very worst. So I feel like this is an overinflated position at the moment. See the Raptor? I haven't had that yet. The Serrano is a great car. People always get this mixed up with the uh, the the Serrano, the um the SUV spelled S-E-R-R-A-O-N so it's Serrano and Serrano <laughs> they sound almost exactly the same really when you just say them generally the Serrano the SUV is a good car as well yeah it's a nice one it, it was for a long time the only SUV with a spoiler upgrade Right, we're into sixth. Serrano is an OG car. I wonder what car I'm going to get last. I'm really curious about what it what it gives me it, the last car. What it's going to be. ZR380 custom. So this is the um, this is the ZR380 that you can get in the vanilla sports car. Uh, class for the arena war stuff but obviously project homecoming have because they're smart about it <laughs> have a regular zr380 and then they made the arena war version sort of with all the extra stuff on it the custom version oh we got a top five just up ahead arena war was such a bad dlc for so many reasons but not giving us a regular zr380 was also one of them <laughs> Can't really get through. Do it on the straight. There we go. Top five hype. I've definitely got some pain coming my way. Right, we've had both jesters. I'm definitely staying off the racing line in the cart. It's gonna be the smartest way to do it. It's not the way that I wanted to do drive that. This has been quite the comeback from 32nd place up to a top five. It's not gonna last. I know that it's not gonna last because I've still got a load of bad cars to come, but it's been a nice experience to, to just be making up places all the time. A good start to the race, at least.
The mages of a top four. This is where I'll get like the raptor or something. No, 9F, we're going to continue the decent cars. Just got to not trash this one. Yeah, we do have a long way to go. It's going to be big position differences. I mean, I'm happy to just be doing some clean laps, to be honest. Got to be able to get past the ZR350 into the... Yeah, I've got much more grip. Hey, third and second, they're just around the hairpin. Where's first gotten to? I can't see the red dot on the map. Oh, they're still half a lap ahead. Here's Lockett, his cart in third place. There's a podium. I didn't think we were going to get the actual drift tamper. <laughs> Bollocks. I was not expecting this. <laughs> I thought I thought it was just gonna be Din Mites played a fast one on me. Din Mites Din Mites Din Mites put in a surprise. <laughs> I actually thought he was gonna put in the the drift tamper that they have on Project Homecoming that is that drives like a normal drift tamper in the game, but it's not actually called the drift tamper or something like that. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but I, I wasn't expecting the drifty drift tamper. <laughs> no wonder the, the gaps are so big. It's not only the slow cars, it's this as well. And there's my lap, lap down from the leader. Yeah, we can we can uh, we can pretend that this is this is a drift tamper that's got low grip tires. Let's pretend that. Back there, we can keep it law friendly to vanilla GTA, just like we pretended this Shiava was the S95. <laughs> okay, that could have gone a lot worse. I think that wasn't too bad of a lap. Now the question is, did he do it on purpose or did he mess up? You never know with did my <laughs> Yeah, maybe he got the wrong the wrong drift tamper. Well, everyone gets the same at least, so it's not as if anyone's majorly disadvantaged by it. It added a little bit of extra spice anyway. And it's perfect for these kind of races. Because you want to have, you know, bigger gaps and some more variations. So the, the gaps between each driver spreads out a lot and then all closes in as, you know, say the leader gets all the slow cars at the end or something. That was a short-lived podium. You seem to be the first to get it to, at least it's out of the way. I don't know. I guess I haven't seen any others. That's a fair point. How how have... Rip. How, how have we gotten to lap 25? And that's the first drift tamper that I've seen. I would have thought... I would have seen... Maybe, I would have thought I would have seen at least one. All right. And now we go down the order again. Here come this is the pain. This is the pain has begun. The first 20 or so, the first quarter of the race almost was painless. That's not going to continue now. Oh, see, I'm trying to stay off the racing line and I still get turned around. Okay. Alright, I'm 
I'm just going to stay to the left on the back straight. No one's going to hit me there. I'm so small and there's so much space and time to see where I am. Okay, we're safe. We're good. I think it was a quicker lap than the Drift Tampa though. Into the Project Homecoming quicker rapid GT. Let's go. One of the very first cars that made me realize the beauty of what can be done with custom 5M racing servers like Project Homecoming. Drive so nicely, so much faster. I said the thing, I had to say the thing. <laughs> yeah, but it's a properly rapid GT. <laughs> I don't know whether I've ever told you guys about it, but there you go. You know about it now. <laughs> Well, I've gone from 3rd to 18th in the space of, like, 4 laps. That's how quickly it can turn. I definitely was enjoying those first 20 or so laps, getting up into 3rd. It's not going to be that nice anymore. thing is, I've still got another cart, I've still got the Blister Compact, I've still got the Futo, the Strider. Still got some really slow cars. Bold. Yep. Thought it was a bit too bold. Coke D10 is not bad. I wish it was smoother over the bumps. But otherwise, it's a quite a nice car. Yeah, two Futos actually, that's a good point. Futo and the Futo G. I always forget about the Futo GTX. It's just another forgettable edition, DLC edition. So many just forgettable cars added. Okay, Sentinel Classic, the one that has the actual Ron livery in vanilla GTA. One of the rarities that's given that's give that's blessed with a Ron livery. Not many of them. Even the hot rings don't get a Ron livery. Disappointing. Don't think I hit him there. I mean, he'll call me out if I did, but I was nowhere near. Oh yeah, the Raptor as well. I've still got to come. It is really annoying that the wide body doesn't have the Ron livery, or generally all the liveries that the regular one does. There's a 76.7% chance that you don't see a given random car, a given car in the first 23 random laps, assuming all the car lists are independent. The probability of all 32 drivers avoiding the tamper in that time is one in 4,700. Wait, really? Someone might have had the tamper and I just didn't see them. Like I didn't come around to lap them or something. All right, we've got our first S tier car. The Italia RSX. Oh no, there'll be four S tier cars if you count the Neon, which technically it still is in the S tier, even if it's just a little bit off, but... There's the Strider, what a stupid car. speed this is this is much faster than what I've been experiencing so far <laughs> yeah this is the this is the understeer understeer city of the S tier under normal circumstances anyway it feels like the spoiler might actually be working on plenty of time coming I don't know okay I haven't driven the RSX for a long time on vanilla Pariah's oversteer city of the S tier. 
The GTO is bounce, bounce central, and then the Neo is like jack of all trades, master of none, <laughs> and also not particularly nice to drive either. Good old classic coquette. Yeah, the Neo, I, I, I kind of agree with that, that the Neo is one of those cars that should realistically be in its own tier. Because it's so much quicker than the A tier cars, but it can't really compete with the other S tier cars. But I think if you put the Neo in its own tier, you just never see the Neo race ever. Because who would do a race with only the Neo? Because <laughs> it's horrible. I should, uh, yeah, I should. Um, I should mod up my Sprunk Buffalo on Project Homecoming to look like my Sprunk Buffalo on my other platforms. That beautiful, beautiful machine. I don't know why you all call it the Barfalo. It's it's beautiful. No barfing at all. <laughs> Please no, everyone saying in the chat. <laughs> Segoy, my car in real life. Not modded quite like this though. Well, it doesn't have a stripe down the middle of it at least. I retested this recently. A couple of days ago actually. I hated every second of it. I think I don't mind the Segoy on like flatter tracks, but it's horrible on city circuits. steer for days which I guess is to be expected from a front wheel drive car but this seems to be to the extreme we're probably settled into the race at this point I'm realizing I'm just kind of like ticking off the laps <laughs> we're a third of the way through and I'm just trying to stay out of trouble and make sure you know we're in that middle portion of the race where things have settled down and we just need to not crash and do the best we can. Stay out of trouble <laughs> is the name of the game. Ahmed Karuma, what a machine. I still have mine that took us to the uh, Criminal Mastermind Challenge finish, got us over the line in the orange and purple. Is this going to be a two-part video or a very long video on YouTube? Oh, it'll be one video. And no mid-rolls. Once again, you never see a mid-roll ad in any of my videos. Even these crazy long ones. Because I hate them. I'm watching videos, so I'm not going to put you through them either. That's why you can always whitelist me on your ad block. 
because you'll only ever see a video at the uh, an ad at the start. <laughs> Should be a hundred short videos. You know, put it up as a hundred different parts, one part, one one lap per video. <laughs> no mild rolls. I don't think we can. I mean, he's still he's leading, so I don't think we can we can. I don't think we can get rid of him at this point. <laughs> hey, the Omnis! God, what I would give to have this livery in vanilla GTA. My favourite car comes up 36th in the order. What a machine. Oh, he's hit the inside. I've still got the blister compact, man. This is another phase of the race where I'm I'm gaining positions because I'm not getting bad cars. <laughs> it's all gonna come crashing down again. Look at this beauty. Troubling the apex there. Well, it's morning. Oh, it's bright outside as well. <laughs> the uh, as as the sun is rising in game, the sun has come out in real life as well. And I am now very bright in the camera. <laughs> Gotta have the window open though for airflow. Yeah, from one rally car to another. Although this one has a standard off-road traction loss, the same as every other sports car. At least the uh, Omnus and Tropos and stuff are better in that regard. We still put it with the rally cars though, because it's about on the same pace as them. But it does better for tarmac rally tracks. This was one of those where in the early days people would like choose the Sultan to go off-road or something thinking it was better just because of the car that it was intending to be and it actually was no better than anything else like you were better off just taking a supercar off-road especially an all-wheel drive supercar Flagon GT, the only good thing to come out of the Arena War DLC. Obviously it doesn't have this livery in vanilla GTA, but lovely car. So good. I mean, the Divestate came with the Arena War DLC as well, I suppose. There's nothing specifically wrong with it. But it's not particularly nice either, I would say. It had an alright top speed. It was pretty terrible around the lap. Not the nicest to drive. It wasn't as bad as all the other Arena War cars, like the actual Arena cars or the um, like the the Vamos and stuff like that with the stupid tow values for the wheels. But uh... oh yeah, it doesn't have bouncy suspension. Actually, the Divest. Hey, either way, the Schlager GT was the only actual good thing. Freaking din mate putting in the drift tamper. <laughs> I appreciate him sorting out the class in the race though. <laughs> it meant I didn't have to do it. <laughs> oh! 
from one passing one Futo to turning into another one. It's going to be one of my slower laps. I'd like to get all the slow cars out of the way, honestly. Can I just, like, have my two blisters, my two Futos, the Strider, the Raptor, the other, um, Vito? I'd really like to just get them done. That was a bit of a nightmare time loss. Lapped by second place now. In fact, the leader is still mild. Uh, he's almost a lap ahead of second place. He's just behind. Mild dominating at the moment, but does he have all the slow cars still to come? That's the question. Could all change towards the end. Oh, there we go. This is what I want. I want to get all the slow cars right now. Perfect. Just avoid everybody. Yes, I do, Mild said in the chat on the, in the game. So he's still got all the slow cars to come. Oh, yeah, got to try and avoid the kerbs. <laughs> Hey, we're having a kart race in the middle of this 100 sports car random all race. We're actually racing for position in the carts. Uh, I've got a lot of people coming around to lap me now, so I need to be careful. Why are these in sports? They would have been more, they, were, they would have made more sense in open wheel, man. Like at least they're, they're related to the open wheel cars in some way. They're going to be just as useful or oh, useless. Comet Safari, I swear to God. As soon as this popped up, I was half expecting the camera to just like launch back and Din might put in the two Fari instead of the regular Comet Safari. <laughs> The camera's so bad on the Comet Safari though, <laughs> it gets bad enough as it is. Alright, so I've got the carts out of the way, I've got the drift tamper out of the way. Got one of the Futos out of the way. So it's it's Raptor, Strider, the other Futo and the two blisters. It's kind of what I've got left when it comes to the really slow stuff. Shafter LWB is one of the slower sports cars as well. The whole Shafter fiasco. What was that DLC? Business? The camera executives maybe? Where they put the Shafter V12 and the Shafter LWB in the sports class and the V12 armoured and the LWB armoured in the sedans class. So you just had the V12 dominating both classes because one was they should have put both the V12s in sports and both the LWBs in sedans. Or just put all of them in sedans. And then they tried to fix it somewhat by making the regular V12 and the regular LWB available in sedan races. But they're still technically in the sports class. They're still sports cars. Yeah. T 
two hot rings? I forgot about the two hot rings. There's so many cars in sports, but <laughs> it's so easy to forget about stuff. And the Schwartz is slow as well. I'm getting I am getting a lot of the slow cars in this phase. Just not the absolute slowest. Back down to almost damn. The way that my position has changed in this race, I was up in a third place at one point. And now I'm back almost in the bottom twit well, top twit like dropping out of the top twenty. The Schwartz is one of the nicer, slower cars to drive though. Could have made a spot, but instead lost a spot. The Schwarze should be in coupés. I mean, it could have been easily in coupés. Yeah, I mean, if you start going down that rabbit hole, I suppose. Well, we've got a long time to go still. <laughs> People have asked in the past for, like, class misallocation videos, like where I would put certain cars in certain classes to fix them. But there's so many class, like bad class allocations for cars, it's it would be impossible to put it all into a video. Even just focusing on one class, like sports, there's just too many, and it just it is what it is. You just got to deal with it now. Armored Paragon, so that's both of the non-raceable sports cars that I've had. Technically, the Vito carts are also non-raceable in sports car races. They're only raceable in kart class races, which didn't exist when they first created them. So you couldn't. They added the Vitos, kart race for kart races, and you couldn't use them in races. It was so dumb. Yeah, you also can't buy this. That's true. Well, you can. Every so often, they'll put it up for sale. Or, no, put it. They put it on the podium, right? The Armored Paragon. But you have to get it through doing the casino. Um, another vanilla Ron livery. Unlapping myself from seventh place. Oh yeah, the drift tamper ahead of me. That's the first other drift tamper that I've seen in this race. There it is. I still haven't seen anybody else in it apart from now. It is a bit of a longer lap, I suppose. So it's it's very possible for people to have cars and just you never see it. I'm just going to be silent for this lap so we can enjoy some peace and quiet. This is the midpoint peace and quiet lap. All I could hear was birds outside, it was really nice. There weren't even any cars around me for this lap, apart from passing that drift tamper again. That was a very nice lap. Alright, the Euros. I feel like this was Rockstar's attempt to fix the fact that they didn't give us a clean ZR380, because they're very similar cars, I don't know cars really. I think I'm sure they're based off two different vehicles, but they're quite similar in terms of body shape. Fake ZR380. 
I've never liked these cars, honestly, in real life. This body shape, when it first came out years ago, I thought they were ugly, and I haven't changed my opinion. 350Z and 370Z, yeah. And I think it was the 350Z that came out first, right? I thought, I, I remember seeing 350Zs in like racing games and whatnot, and just thinking they were horrendous. <laughs> I really dislike it. Alright, we're back up in the 13th. Jester RR, two tuners in a row. One more Jester to go with the Jester Classic. That's got a story behind it. I kind of like these races where we've got slightly longer laps. We're doing a wide variety of cars. Because we get to talk about like little bits of trivia and stuff about the cars. Further more interesting or weird ones anyway. It's not stuff that anyone who's been following my channel for a few years doesn't already know, but it's nice to reminisce on some of the more weird aspects of of GTA and cars and whatnot over the years. You missed the off-road traction loss when you had the Jester. The fact that it's got a higher off-road traction loss than all other sports cars. Yeah, I'd already mentioned off-road traction loss once with the Sultan, so I thought I'd better not talk about it again. <laughs> but I've, I've, I've ruined that now, so... Here it is, the shaft of V12. That I think was rightfully put in the sports class. Back when they added it, they just messed up with the armoured versions. Instead of putting both V12s in sports, and both LWBs in sedans, they put both regular versions in sports and both armoured versions in sedans. That was their mess up. I think the shaft of V12 is alright in sport, but now that we've got you know, years down the line, when we realise we've got much quicker sedans and there's so many sports cars that could have been in sedans that are on very similar pace, it's like they probably just should have put them all in sedans and had made that more interesting at the top. Komoda, Revolta and all that kind of stuff that I talked about earlier. Uh, it didn't have the highest top speed in the game when it was released, but it had the highest top speed in the sports class, the shaft of V12. And it, yeah, it was the quickest four-door sports car, for, well, car in general, for a long time. Regular Massacro, so we've had both, de both of the first DLC sports cars with the Alpha and now the Massacro. We're in the second half of the race. Still in 13th. I feel like a top 10 would be a decent result, given that I started right at the back. Two Spectres, Spectre and the Spectre Custom. I like the Spectres. I never liked Bennies, honestly. The idea of having basically almost two identical cars that were just one had more customization, like the Spectre and the Spectre Custom. Just just bloated things out more so than necessary. The the exceptions to that are cars where they have, you know, actually significant changes like the faction donk and the uh like the LG Retro, not from an LG RH8, they could have just added an LG Retro and that would have been done with. 
not even put it to pennies, but you know, when the car changes significantly, I'm okay with it. But when it's just basically the same car copied over again. Especially when they have the same performance as well. Like the Buccaneer and the Buccaneer Custom and a lot of the muscle cars, the custom version has literally exactly the same performance as the regular version. Don't get me started on the Banshee 900R and the Sultan RS changing into Supers when they still would have been off the pace in sports. But that's a change that I'm okay with. Those are those are reasonable changes. Taking the Banshee to Benny's and turning it into a 900R, taking a Sultan and turning it into the Sultan RS. Put them in supers. <laughs> There's the energy. The old faithful, the old classic. The car that for a long time led the sports class. It was one of those cars that people never believed like I think that the, the actual car that I used to have to tell people was the quickest in the sports class was a contributing factor to why people had such a hard time dealing with the fact that their car wasn't the quickest or you know this lap time testing was different to what they'd been experiencing with looking at stat bars or whatever because it didn't have that great of a top speed it didn't feel like it should be quick and most people, if they weren't maximizing it in terms of cornering grip, which a lot of people probably weren't able to do of the general GTA driving population, there was nothing to suggest that this was the quickest car, but it was just so dominant. <laughs> oh, there's the Strider. There it is. What an absolute joke this car is. <laughs> Wait, stat bars aren't accurate? That can't be right. <laughs> Why did they put this in? Why didn't they just put, like, the regular Strider in? The one that they have on Project Homecoming as a mod. Just a normal car. Not lifted like this. It's so ugly and stupid and slow and god-awful. And they put it in friggin' sports. This might be the least sports class sports car in my opinion. Like at least some of the other cars have like a... I don't know what I can do in that situation. <laughs> um, at least the other... the other... Um, like other, other cars in the sports class have like some sort of redeeming feature that you might be able to say, okay, I can see it. Ballistic Compact's pretty bad, but it is sort of a more sporty version, I guess you could say, of the Ballista. It's still stupid, but the Strider is probably the worst. In my opinion. Just absolutely horrendous class on occasion. And a stupid car as well. We're at the midpoint of the race where the field spread is the biggest it's going to be most of the, for most people. Because all the guys at the top have had all of the faster cars, all the guys at the back have had all the slower cars. And now, as we get into the second half of the race, it all starts to come together again. So it'll start to get a bit more spicy from this point on, I think. Is there? I don't like the carbon is there. I like it, but I don't like it. I don't like the way that it drives, but I like sort of the styling of it, the drop top convertible aspect. But it 
it doesn't drive nicely. Even when I've gone back and retested it, I've not enjoyed driving it. G Fred car, get out. And there it is. God, it's taken me 58 cars to get one of the two blisters. The slowest of the sport cars shouldn't be in the sports class at all, let's be honest. This was the first one where the class missile. I mean, like I said, we had some bad classes misallocations in in the original release of cars like Fusillade, Penumbra, stuff like that. But this was the big one with the ex was it uh, the enhanced version of the game, the PS4 and Xbox One versions. This was introduced, and they put it in bloody sports. The blister, co the blisters in the compact class, but the more compact blister, the blister compact. Yeah, let's put that in sports. <laughs> and it was so slow. It still is the slowest sports car. It would have been the top compact if they'd put it in compacts, because it is quicker than the regular blister, and it was quicker than all the compacts at the time. But obviously, that's since been demolished but at least there would have been some use of it for a short amount. The Locust! I've completely forgot about this car's existence! Oh and it drives nicely on Project Homecoming as well. Oh what was the thing that was fixed with this? I remember I remember talking about it in the video that we did. I can't remember what it was. It was like one tiny little change to a handling file flag or something. And it immediately, with no other changes, started driving nicely. Because it drives horrendously on vanilla GTA. Center of mass was moved by 0 0.1 or something. Oh, no, yeah, it was body roll. I think it was body roll was moved by like 0 0.1 somewhere. It was something like that, like a center of mass or body roll type thing. There wasn't like bouncy flags on it or anything like that. It was just literally changing the value of one thing. And it immediately became incredible to drive. There is a video on it. I think I titled it something like a nice driving locust or something like that. I mentioned it in that video. They definitely don't drive the cars before they put them out. <laughs> Or if they do, it's people who are just driving to see to make sure it can actually accelerate, brake and turn, not actually what it's like to drive. It feels like the centre of mass is about one metre above the car in mid-air. It might have been something like that, that the centre of mass was in mid-air or something and whoever it was at the time, I think it was Johnny, changed it on Project Homecoming to actually be reasonable and actually where it should be. And it just immediately fixed it. Let's have a look. Mild and lock the top two. No surprise. I mean, this is a more skill based race because everyone gets the same cars by the end, so the faster drivers will end up at the front. There's no luck involved. Apart from, like, you know, getting involved in crashes and whatnot, that's just normal racing. Quickest guys always come to the front in these races. I like the Tropos. People seem to think that because I like the Omnus that I don't like the Tropos, but it's not true. I actually really do like the Tropos and it drives really nicely as well. I just like the Omnus more.
The trump boss is quicker and easier to get the speed out of it though. But the Omnus is the best. Comets. I've never been able to get on with all the Comets. I think the Comet S2 is the one that I like driving the most, but that's not saying much. I'm so bad with the regular Comet. I don't think I mind actually driving the Comet. I just, I'm not very good with it. I think I can sometimes get away with it depending on the track. It might be a nice experience. It's not like the Cabla's Air where I just dislike it. All right, VSTR, there's another one of those that could have been in sedans and at the top of the sedans class. Like, I don't know how you can look at this car and think, and, and you have a sedans class and a sports class available, and you choose sports to put it in. Like, how is it not a sedan in any way, shape, or form? Like, when you're comparing those two options. Okay, it might be a sports sedan, right? But sedan is the primary thing that it is. Nobody wants to buy a sedan. And there is the rub. That is the, the whole reason we've got 100 cars in the sports class. Because people buy supers and sports cars and don't want to buy any of the other classes. So they just put it everywhere. Put it in sports. Don't think about it. People will buy it. Because people are silly and stupid and don't care. Ooh, new sports car, let's buy. Yeah, you bought a sedan, mate. <laughs> yes, let the hate flow through you. <laughs> well, it was bound to happen, wasn't it, during the car? You can't have a hundred sports cars in a single race without me talking about all this crap. Coming up to the final third of the race. I like the car seater. One of the nicest new sports cars, I think. Shame it bounces with the bouncy flag on vanilla. Ooh, pariah. One of my favourite sports cars. Let's go. Looks like there's some traffic in front. That's the only problem I'm going to have. Would have been a nice lap otherwise. This is the car they had to make to dethrone the Elegy. And it dethroned it humongously. And then it was not usurped for top speed for years. That's how OP it had to be to get rid of the Elegy off the top spot. It's still the fastest sports car, top speed wise. Um, not, you know, not counting HSW cars. No, it didn't work. I really like the Elegy. It's an awesome car, uh, the Elegy, the Pariah. It really is awesome. So much fun to, and a challenge to drive. It was my quickest lap. I'm not surprised, actually. Even with traffic and a missed handbrake boost, I'm not surprised it was my quickest lap. scared by how 
aggressive he is being. <laughs> Almost got wiped out so many times on this lap. Holy cow. Right, we're in the final third. Sentinel Classic wide body, and because we're on Project Homecoming, we do have a Ron livery on this. Doesn't exist on Vanilla GTA, because of course it doesn't. No love for Ron. Even though they had a Ron livery for the regular Sentinel Classic that they could have just, you know, used. Still got the Go Go Monkey Blister. What's the other slow car? The other Futo. I think that's it now, right? For the slow cars. That's all I've got left. Oh, the Raptor, of course. Yeah, that wasn't it. But it will be after this lap. Oh, what a mess. What a mess of a car. It's not. Can you even really call it a car? Did I avoid the kerbs on my uh, testing lap for this? I feel like I did. Like you just have to, otherwise it will crash every lap. Not looking forward to testing this again. This is one of those really weird vehicles where it's very difficult to place it. Like, what class would you put this in? I guess you could have put it in compacts, maybe. Like, motorcycles went to mind, but it's not really a motorcycle. I'm glad that lap's over with. Sultan Classic. As night draws in again. Tampa. Yeah. See, that's when a respawn would have been really nice to have from Turbo there. <laughs> Misery created. The reason I don't go inside on that last corner is because you can carry a lot of speed around the outside and the drift cars will tend to try and keep it tight to drift out wide so if you go on the inside you might just end up stuck behind a slow car on the inside of the apex with nowhere to go ordinarily it's not a good idea to go around the outside of a drift car but on that hairpin i think it's all right And I've done it twice now and it's worked fine, so... <laughs> well, I've been in this sort of like 12th, 13th place for a long time. No real change for a while. should all start to close up a bit now. Got two more 
slow cars to go. Still got the Italian GTO as well. And the Fozza. I'm looking forward to the Fozza lap. One of the nicest sports cars to drive. actually somewhat difficult to see when the game gets to night with the brightness outside in real life as it is and the fact that it's very difficult to see the car in the dark spots uh, yeah still mild and locking top two Too much brightness on the screen from outside. Alright, the Amorgon that I've had to test like four times because it's changed so much whether you can have the turbo on and whether the turbo sticks and then it doesn't and then it's removed completely and then they've got the turbo back and I don't mind the Amorgon though. It doesn't have that sort of raw acceleration that you experience with the Neon. It's a decent car. It's an it's a it's an electric car that can actually turn. <laughs> What's the latest sports car? The Everon, isn't it? This is one of them, but... This has been undrip fed this one. Alongside many other cars in this DOC. <laughs> This is, yeah, this is a new manufacturer, I suppose. Tundra. It drives alright. It's not a bad car by any means. Chameleon. The OG electric car. Of the sports class, anyway. Remember when this was locked behind the uh, collector's edition? was this the carbon rs bike and the hot uh what's it called the hot knife you could only buy those cars in gt online and access them in single player i think if you'd bought the collector's edition of the game which i didn't have so i had to have other people give me the car back when i did the early testing so i could test it <laughs> Okay, it's there. That's a lot of lag. Alright, a Flash GT that isn't bouncy as hell. It's actually nice to drive. Was the Flash GT another Arena War um, casualty? It was, right? Oh, a position! First position change in ages, up to 11th. Was it the casino? Yeah, maybe. It was something. Or was it 
Super Spot series. Well, I, I can't remember. Either way, it was one of the DLCs when the bounciness was at its most prevalent. Even track tyres can clip can help the Flash GT feel nice to drive. I think it was Southern San Andreas Super Spot series, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. We need a website where we could check. I know, right? If only we had a, something like a GTAcars.net that gave you all that kind of information. <laughs> Buffalo S. Such a nice car, the Buffaloes. All the Buffaloes, really. Top 10! Yeah, the Drift Tampers are finally getting out there in the wild. Maybe there's a lot of people ahead of me who... Uh, who haven't had the drift tamper yet might make up some positions even now top 10 hype we are indeed in the last quarter of the race and yeah I've still got the Atali GTO to go the fastest sports car only because of the bumps though, it might not do as well. I might not be able to beat my pariah lap time because of the smooth back straight on this version. The pariah always outdrags the GTO on smooth flat roads. It will depend on traffic as well to be fair. Alright, got the last Jester. Yeah, still got the Neo actually as well. But then again, I've still got the other Futo and the Gogo Monkey Blister, so I've got equally the fastest and slowest sports cars still to go. This is what I was thinking of when I was talking about uh, the trivia. How this was meant to be released with... I want to say Arena War. Was it Arena War first or After Hours? It was meant to be released with one of them. And then because the model of it was so bad, and the headlights were like just stuck on and there was so many bugs with it that the community found by looking at it on PC beforehand. They delayed it and just never released it in the DLC that they they were intending to release it on. And then put it out. And they changed the class in the, in the meantime. They put It was in Sports Classics. And then they changed it and put it into Sports. <laughs> and that's why you can still use it in its stock form in Sports Classics races because they never made that change when they changed it to sports class. It was after hours when it was released. So whatever it was before after hours is when it was actually put in the game and they just never released it. All right, the faster Futo. It's not that much faster though. Super Sport Series, okay. Oops. Ah, oh, right, the leader is behind me again. Uh, I'm a few laps, I'm two laps down. If he laps me again, I'll be three laps down. I'm glad we have this feature to get all sports cars. I'd be disappointed if I didn't get all of them. I'm not surprised that I'm multiple laps down because I'm not as quick as the top guys and I started in 32nd place. So it's nice that we're going to be able to get all of the cars even being multiple laps down. As long as it works as intended. <laughs> a little bit scared of Benny's Aussie ping for a while there. He said in the game chat, don't be. Easier said than done. Links, 
Ah, oh, remember the Lynx? I actually like the Lynx. The Lynx is a fun car to drive. It, it's quite nice. It is actually quite nice of a driving experience. But when it first came out, the price was absolutely heinous. Now it's just normal sports car price. But back then, $1.735 million. We've got a donation sound that's 1735 because of it. Because for a long time, this was the most expensive sports car by a significant margin. And it was hopeless in terms of lap time. And that was back when sports cars were barely even 1 million. It was very much ahead of its time. Now it is pretty much bang on average sports car price. <laughs> hey, there it is! The quicker penumbra. Not the quickest penumbra that we've seen in this race, but it's the Project Homecoming quicker penumbra. The classic. Another one of the early ones. I don't know where that even came from. Was it one of the early streams on Project Homecoming? And I mean, one of the ones where I was talking to Nos and Insomniac or something, and he probably mentioned something like, this isn't just any penumbra. We've been able to actually change the handling of it to make it quicker. And I would probably be like, so it's a quicker penumbra? <laughs> Amazed back in the day. Same with the Rapid GT just lived on. I think Nos said it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. 10 seconds up to 9th place. I've got 26 second gap to 11th. Big gaps. I mean, it makes sense after 100 laps that the gaps will be big, even if it is closing up in terms of the performance of cars. Alright, 10F. I've still got the other 10F to have as well, right? Getting in the closing stages now. That wasn't the greatest driving of that corner I've ever done in my life. The 10F is a very difficult card to be consistent with, actually. But it gave us that incredible race, the 10F versus the 9F versus the 8F multi-class race we did. That was really good. Ooh, Tampa in front. That's been the bogey vehicle of this race, the Tampa. That is the slowest. Oh, there's the fastest now. How's this lap going to be? Traffic ahead, that's the only problem. Although there was traffic ahead for the Pariah lap as well, but... Thing is, it doesn't uh, bounce as much on Project Homecoming because they fixed the advanced flags, so it might not be as quick as... The, the Pariah might actually be the quickest car in this race. Because it doesn't get, I mean, the Italian GTO still gets mad speed boost from the bumps, but nowhere near as much as what it does on vanilla because it doesn't have the bouncy flag. And we've got parts of smooth track. We'll see what the lap time is. I haven't been overly held back. I think I had a worse lap in the prior. Yeah, Pariah was quicker. 300R. Another one that was taken away from us. Oh, we got a penumbra up ahead. Can we get ninth place on this lap? Still got the bloody blister, the go go monkey blister to go. That's the only problem now. Do 
did, did not close in on that penumbra as much as I would have liked. There it is, the Go Go Monkey Blister, in white for some reason. No Go Go Monkey Blister livery. Alright, that's all the slow cars done. We got 15 either average or quick cars to go. Still got the Neo, still got the Feltzer. Are there any other OG cars that I've still got to have? Other than the Feltzer? I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't think so. Oh my god, it's 1.2 seconds between the top two. It has closed up. Oh, the Banshee. Yeah, I've still got the Banshee to go. Oh, I'm going to look forward to that lap. ZR350. Oh my god, that's one hell of a crash. ZR350 deserved so much better. Pace-wise. So lackluster. Oh, is that a cart? It is fifth place. See, I've gotten all of these bad cars out of the way. Some of the top guys are getting them in the late stages. Oh, I mean, I was on up the inside. It's so difficult to do anything with those carts. <laughs> he hasn't said anything in the chat and he got going again pretty quickly, I think, so we're okay. He hit the curb. Oh, maybe it was the curb. I don't know. Either way, he hasn't called me out to wait, so... I'm not gonna. I did not. Or maybe he didn't hit the curb. Just edit it out. Yeah, I'll just edit out that bit. Nothing happened! There's some moments where, like, like I waited earlier on in the race for a crash. And then there's some that are just like, you know. If the person calls me out, I will wait. But it sometimes it's one of those things that you just, you know, with GTA, with Project Homecoming lag, with the type of cars that everybody's in in that situation. Sometimes it's not worth it. It's why I don't bother calling people out sometimes. I've been taken out a few times in this race and I... Sometimes I just think it's not worth the call out because no one could have really done anything about that. It doesn't really matter. Let's just get on with it. Hey, Fauta. me but it's quick not driving a very good felt lap if you don't own a felt please buy one right now that is true you have to own a felt it's such a lovely car to drive i slept on it for the first couple of years of the game but it still holds up as a beautifully driven car especially like in the hills oh Put off roads on it though. It's better with tyres can clip. Off road making it smoother. And the Banshee, we got two OG cars out in close proximity. That might be it for the OG cars, the day one cars. I'm 
gonna get last. And will anyone get something like the Blister Compact or the Drift Tamper on their last lap and then it'll all change at the end? You never know. It's the excitement of these races. You get a little bit less of that in, you know, nearly two hour long races because just the natural ebb and flow spreads out with driver skill and whatnot, but... seconds the top two are having a good old battle here for the win all right lap 90 specter custom that's the two specters out of the way armored karuma up in front should be able to make some inroads into an armored karuma if i can get past these Markers. Although that ZR380 is quite quick, I remember that lap being quick. It might fly past me on the straights again. It did. Damn it. I'm quicker in the corners. been fun to do this though I hope everybody's enjoyed I think it was a good idea for random all number 100 100 laps and the fact that we got a hundred sports cars not just shortly before the hundredth random more video it kind of made sense to do this here's the latest one sports car number 100 the hot ring Everon. To remember the really weird way that it handles. And the latest removed one. Oh, they removed this as well, didn't they? They're going to bring them all back. They're just doing it to extend the drip feed so they can, like, bring them back again on another week. Because there's still messages in the in the game file saying that the cars are going to be available again like, it's just they want to pretend that they're not going to be available so that everyone will buy them and then they'll bring them back again for a second wave it's just reusing content to the max this has been the reused reused content dlc drug wars <laughs> even the missions are all just single player reskins <laughs> All right, ADF Drafter. We're into the final 10. Can I keep a top 10? Can I better that? We'll find out in the next 10 minutes. I don't feel like I've driven particularly great in this race. I don't think I've driven particularly bad either. Fairly standard. It's difficult for me to... I have to be... Like, I have good races every now and then. I can't just turn it on whenever I want, unfortunately. And certainly, not. I don't, I don't have the skill to last long enough in a long race like this. One or two of my laps might have been really good, but not all of them. Ah, <laughs> oh, the GB200. Oh, the cart. Oh, he's flipped. <laughs> There's ninth. See, people still might have carts or drift tampers to go. There's the ice cream van. Gonna blow everybody's ears out. Oh, my God. It's all kicking off in the final stages of the race. to put as much time as I can ahead of that Vito Modern. The, GP2, the GB200 drives so nicely by the way on Project Homecoming. I just forgot about this car completely because it's so bad in vanilla GTA with all the advanced flags but this is really nice. This has been a nice lap. 
22 seconds between the top two now. It's extended again. There's the Neo. The last of the actual quick cars. The top tier. Again, this drives nicer as well than what it does. I get, I always, I sometimes do this. I'll drive a car in a random race or something on Project Homecoming and think, oh, I really like that car. Why do I not own one? And then I'll try it on vanilla GTA and realize why. Because Project Homecoming have fixed all the issues with it. This Neo drives nicely. The GB200 drove nicely. The Flash GT drove nicely. Don't still, I want them on vanilla GTA, but like that. <laughs> right, to 1.8 seconds to 8th place. Got 30 second gap back to 10th. I think there's a 7th place just ahead, actually. Ah, oh, the bestia. Bestia versus VSTR. Oh, crashy crashes. Told you it would all come together towards the end, and that's exactly what it's doing. It always does in these class specific races. It always converges. In a race now. I think I'm still a lap down from fifth place though. Yeah, I think so. So top five I don't think is gonna be doable. But if I can keep a top ten I'd be pretty happy. Paragon R. This is one of the quicker cars in sports as well. Quicker than a 9F for sure, I can do this. That's a classic Olympic GP multi-class endurance championship move up, the, up into that corner if you get a good run. Practiced that one before. Two point eight seconds, two point five seconds to Din Might in the Growler. We got a battle on our hands for the lower reaches of the top ten. Watch I want I need Din Might to have still Oh no, he's had it, hasn't he? The, has he had the drift tamper? Did we pass him in the drift tamper? I was gonna say I need him to still have that to go. That would have been like poetic just as that he got that on the last lap or something and I overtook him. I don't know if he's had it already actually. I can't remember. It's, a lot has happened in this race. One hour, 50 minutes. <gasps> oh, bloody hell. That was scary. Oh, he's quicker in that core kit. Oh, this is a right old battle. This is a right old battle. Oh, come on, Din Might. <laughs> he knew he just went in way too deep there. <laughs> There's fourth place in the veto. Comet Retro Custom. So I gained a position and lost a position in that race. In that lap even. All fighting over 7th place. Oh no! That's the Comet Retro Custom effect. It always... I forgot about this. It always turns more than you expected to, this car. It's got some weird handling on it. 
comets together. I do not like the comets. <laughs> I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. Allowed in the Futo in second. Oh, he's having... Deltonio's having to wait. Mild was trying to type in the chat. Oh, Luck's taking the win, actually. That's the last lap for them. Oh, yeah, there's only two laps to go. So I'm back into eighth. We got RBS in sixth. Dinmite in seventh. Strider. Penumbra FF. Raiden. Because Daltonio's had to wait, we're now battling over sixth place. Oh, did Mild get the carts on lap 80, 98 and 99? No way. What a ridiculous end to the race. No wonder he was so far ahead for so long. I mean, those two were the, the class of the field. It's no surprise they got the top two positions. But for Mild to not have any of the cut, Wow, that's crazy. In the lead. Alright, we got one more lap to go. A sixth place is on. Top five are finishing now. Din I'm battling with Dinmite 1.5 seconds back for a sixth place. And then we've got RBS three seconds back who could be challenging there as well. What are the cars going to be? Oh, the 10F wide body, of course, against the Jester, best, best Jester BTS, the best of your GTS. Oh, this could be spicy coming up to the line. Spectre Custom behind, I don't think I need to worry about. Last lap. It's the lack of grip with the 10F, that's the only problem. So difficult to be consistent with it as well. Don't think it's gonna happen. It's not that much quicker on the back straight, is it gonna be? Oh, we're closing in! We're closing in! <laughs> Quite quickly. Not quickly enough though. Not quickly enough, and then I've crashed. <laughs> Tried to push it too much on the last corner. Sixth place it is. Uh, seventh place, even. GG's. That was fun. That was that was uh, exciting. Exciting right at the end. It's crazy, isn't it? Like after a hundred laps. You can have races like that right at the end. If I hadn't have made that mistake, I probably would have uh, finished like a second behind or something. Oh, and then the bloody Comet Retro. If it hadn't have been for the Comet Retro Custom mistake, I probably would have got sixth. No chance of getting a top five. Quite far behind there. But to get a seventh from, from starting in 30 seconds, stone dead last... To get up to seventh, I think that's all right. That's pretty good. I can I can be I can be pleased with that comeback through the pack. Well, it can't really be called a comeback, can it? Because I never I was never there in the first place. But <laughs> I, I'm pretty happy with that. Thirty second to seventh is is a good return. I know an enjoyable race. A hundred laps, a hundred sports cars, getting them all done, having some good battling, and for the hundredth episode of the Random More series. It is nice being able to let everybody finish and get all the cars. Uh, yeah, thirty second up to third, and then down to eighteenth, and then up to seventh. It was it was quite hectic that race. Interesting. I was really hoping that Locke still had the Tampa to go, but it didn't happen. Yeah, really close race between you guys at the top two. Amazing, best laps really close as well. Uh, so was Ferris Stanley's, but. Yeah, that's crazy mild for, for mild to still have the two veto carts to go in the last three laps and to get them on laps 98 and 99. I bet Locke thought it was all over. 
30 seconds behind on lap 96 and I was like surely he hasn't got two carts in his last four laps <laughs> but yeah but, the, but he did <laughs> that's crazy what a change right at the end me and Mild started 27th and 28th respectively so wow that, that's crazy started at the same point ended first and second and had that crazy end with the, the way that it worked out with the carts so this is what Din Might has made I'll link it in the description of the video as well but uh he did this for the 100th random all as well. From the creator who made all the random all tracks and who hates number 42 and also hates unsound methods with a passion. I mean, it's reasonable to be fair. Uh, Dinmite has made us this. All the tracks used in random more races. All the episodes that we've done for random more. Here are all the tracks, all the layouts. And yeah, he did this for the 100th episode of Random All as well, where we got all the 100 Random All tracks. And these are all the 100 Random More tracks. There was the crossover jumps that we did for the last episode where we went through all my best, uh, all my most gotten uh, cars in Random All. There's Harmonic Multilinearity. That's a big one to do. And then there's number 100 on Cutting Corridors GP. Really cool. Good stuff, did mate. All the tracks with all the game modes and the themes. Yeah, because every random mall race has a theme to it. That's why all the cars are, you know, set for something random pain or random sporty or a run random race. Anyway, if anyone wants to peruse this, I'll leave it linked in the description of the video so you can have a proper look at it. It's a big, big image. There he goes, starting his last lap. Oh no, he finished. Finishing his last lap. There we go, everybody finished. Beautiful. Nice to see.